So good day, everybody. This is uh, uh, Rolf Brink speaking from Asperitas. Uh, I'll be presenting the optimized immersion service presentation, um, in which I'll be I'll be showing uh, a spec that Asperitas is open sourcing uh, within the OCP environment. Um, let me start by giving a little bit of a technology background here. Asperitas is uh, an immersion technology provider uh, and our basic product is the ASE24, which exists in 15, 19 and 21 inch versions. Um, the Asperitas technology um, is distinguished by the fact that it's a passive immersion technology, which doesn't require any pumps for the, uh, for the dielectric liquid circulation. The current power densities that we can support uh, go up to 43 kilowatts uh, with uh, dry cool installations and up to even 60 kilowatts with, chill, with chilled water. Um, with uh, two N power delivery to the system, uh, which is fully supported uh, in, uh, in full redundancy. The compute density figures that this technology can facilitate with these kind of power loads are up to about 45 to 67 kilowatts per square meter uh, with a solution footprint of 23, 23 to 34 square meters of white space, uh, uh, kilowatts per square meter of white space. And that's all based on relatively high temperature cooling. Uh, the Asperitas technology is focused on integration of features. Um, Basically, everything that you need to run IT equipment uh, is integrated in the technology. Uh, so integrated is uh, approximately 43 kilowatts uh, or 43 kilowatts of power delivery uh, with rec level switch gear fully integrated in the system and full power management tooling and power management controls uh, for remote management. Uh, cooling wise, it connects directly to facility water systems. Uh, and it can control and manage its own cooling uh, cooling requirements, as in flow, uh, the liquid flow, the water that circulates through the system. Uh, everything can be fully managed by the system itself. Uh, everything is also focused on monitoring. So also the thermal and the pressure of the water circuit, uh, the thermal properties and the pressure of the water circuit is fully monitored. The uh, system is equipped with uh, monitoring features with alarming and logging features which ensure the full safety of immersion systems in the data center. Uh, it doesn't only stop there with the management and uh, telemetry that comes out of the system, uh, but from a mechanical point of view, the solution is fully designed for maximum containment, liquid containment and thermal containment uh, due to the dual hole design uh, and the full monitoring capabilities of the liquid environment. Uh, with full serviceability being a focus and also a focus on IT optimization. So all the IT equipment which is used in our technology is fully optimized for immersion together with uh, all of our partners. And more on that in the upcoming slides. But one of the uh, fundamental strategic collaborations that we maintain within Asperitas uh, is the one that relates to the immersion liquid. Uh, Asperitas uses the Shell Immersion Cooling Fluid, uh, the S5X liquid, which is available for the entire industry, uh, but which has been jointly developed by Asperitas and Shell. Um, and this liquid is fully synthetic um, and is optimized for immersion cooling, for the immersion cooling application, both for natural convection circulation, as in the Asperitas technology, uh, as well as the mechanical circulator technologies. The liquid is very safe to work with and has a very high purity uh, properties. Um, it meets all of the purity requirements of the European Union and the US pharma uh, pharmaceutical uh, organizations. It has a very low volatility, uh, so it's a very stable liquid. It's non-halogenated, food grade, and free from any kind of allergen. It's also the, the same base oil is also used as medicinal liquids, which are used in medicines also for uh, consumption. The performance uh, goals with this liquid are mostly focused on the thermodynamic properties. So all the thermal 
uh, capabilities of this, of this liquid are optimized for maximum thermal uh, for maximum uh, thermal absorption and uh, and transport. The liquid doesn't evaporate easily, so the temperatures that are required for uh, evaporate uh, to allow the liquid to evaporate are very high. Um, it's a low density liquid, so the weight requirements that follow from it are relatively low, uh, with a weight of 0.8 kilograms per liter or 0.85, uh, and with a very high flash point. Uh, so Asperitas works with flash points uh, well above 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, protection and reliability of this liquid uh, is, uh, the properties that relate to protection and reliability are significant. Um, so the liquid has a high compositional consistency, which means it doesn't really uh, degrade easily. Yeah? So it has a very, very long lifetime. Um, it's, got, it's got a very high oxidation stability and thermal stability. So Aspiritus makes a point of testing uh, everything for very high temperature operation. And we've been running uh, platforms with this liquid with temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius, uh, which is very high for an IT platform to work with. Um, and the stability of this liquid is very essential to make that possible. There is virtually no sulfur, nitrogen, or aromatics, simply because this is a, a liquid that is not distilled or refined. This is a liquid which is fully synthetic. More on that in the next slide. Uh, but also, very importantly, it's a non-corrosive liquid. So the shell liquid in this case is uh, manufactured uh, and not refined. So manufactured means that it's complete, it's manufactured from a natural gas. Um, and it's done with the Shell GTL process, which is uh, abbreviate, which is an abbreviation for gas to liquid. And in this process, this liquid is manufactured on a molecular level. Um, more information on this can be it can be gotten from uh, Shell directly. So if you're interested in Shell liquids, uh, feel free to contact Shell. Um, I'll be able to share some contact information and Shell is also part of the uh, Digital Summit. Um, there's, uh, uh, the, the specifications for the liquids that we're using, that we're standardized on, uh, are uh, public information that can be found on our website, but also on the Shell website. Um, but suffice to say that all the properties uh, qualify uh, for the immersion requirements which are set out in the, uh, by the immersion community within OCP advanced cooling solutions. Um, so one of the important aspects about the collaboration that we have with Shell is that we focus on uh, monitoring the quality of the liquid. And Shell provides this capability continuously, also with our customer deployments. Um, especially in our technology center, we make a point of using many different IT configurations in the same liquid so we can monitor uh, potential pollution or uh, materials that have been dissolved in the liquid. Uh, and on a regular basis, we perform an oil, oil analysis, and Shell uh, is, has the capabilities of uh, monitoring the quality of this oil. Um, and we're also taking oil samples from customer deployments to maintain a track record of what kind of things can happen with the liquid. So, so far, uh, there has been no evidence of any kind of uh, property degradation that might even remotely affect any kind of IT operation. Uh, but the analysis is done nevertheless, um, and especially when it comes to developing new platforms, new technologies, new specifications for IT equipment, these kind of tests are uh, valuable. Uh, and Asperto is not the only party in the world that Shell can do this with. Of course, any kind of uh, platform provider can set up a collaboration with Shell on these kind of things. Um, so this slide shows a couple of um, uh, of the type of testing that Shell is doing uh, on these type of platforms. Now, within the context of the Asperitas technology, Asperitas is focused on optimizing IT equipment for immersion and not uh, in a proprietary way. Um, Asperitas is a company that is not, not creating or selling IT equipment, uh, but to make immersion safe and accessible for the whole world to use, 
Um, it is important to recognize uh, improvements that can be made to IT equipment um, to allow any kind of IT manufacturer uh, to benefit from the better, from immersion technology. We've decided to open source uh, some of our developments, one of which is, is an optimized chassis. And this specification has been shared with, uh, with the community within the immersion calls. Uh, so if you want to keep track of these kind of uh, specifications, not only by Asperitas, but also from other companies, make sure to join these calls. Uh, in this case, what I'm presenting here is the spec by Asperitas regarding an optimized chassis, which is suitable for 15 inch, 19 inch or 21 inch deployments with one or two U or open U uh, form factors. Uh, the basic property of, the, of this uh, chassis is uh, the fact that it's optimized for liquid flow. As in most server chassis are designed for air and do not allow as much flow through all the hole patterns, through all the gaps, uh, which liquid requires. Um, it is also optimized for servicing. It is completely flexible regarding IT equipment design. It can facilitate virtually any kind of IT combination, and it's suitable for working with C13 power delivery or bus bars. Uh, the serviceability, uh, the serviceable design relates to the mechanical lifting interfaces, which are part of the chassis design, but also uh, to the guidance system, which allows you to lower the chassis uh, this cassette, in this case, what we call it, uh, into a slot that is predefined in a rack uh, without getting stuck anywhere. Um, it also contains a toolless protective lid, which can be used to service IT equipment inside. Uh, and as mentioned before, it's fully liquid optimized. So part of that optimization for liquid is related to uh, server to a, a serviceable side being above liquid levels, uh, which means that all the interfaces can be redirected to a dry area on the chassis. Uh, so if you want to uh, have access to cable uh, to cable interfaces, these can be disconnected or connected or attached uh, without getting your hands in the liquid. Um, then there is flow apertures for liquid. Uh, so with liquid cooling, with immersion cooling, uh, a dielectric liquid needs to enter the chassis. Uh, there are uh, flow apertures in the chassis, present in the chassis on the sides and on the front and the rear side, at least in the bottom. In the top side, there is outflow apertures in the, on the sides of the chassis. Now uh, that's because virtually every uh, open bath immersive technology that we're aware of uh, is uh, maintaining a certain type of cir circulation from the bottom or the side with an extraction on the, uh, uh, oriented on the side of the IT chassis. In this case, the bottom side of the chassis is also completely opened up to allow maximum liquid inflow. Um, as mentioned, uh, this chassis can incorporate a whole range of IT designs. So what the chassis does not, in, uh, does not do is uh, uh, this spec does not determine the position of any studs or spaces for uh, electronic components. It only outlines the chassis and how it can be built. And it also includes the actual design files. Um, so from a mechanical point of view, it's it's a closed box with a removable lid, but the top side of the chassis uh, contains a flexible interface design. So it's got a it contains a separate plate which uh, with a hole pattern which can be modified for any kind of uh, uh, for for any kind of uh, uh, interface assembly. The IT design guidelines uh, do apply to the chassis. So there is a separate presentation during the summit that is focused on uh, optimizing IT equipment for immersion uh, and this specification is fully in line with that white paper. Um, 
it facilitates material compatibility uh, uh, or, uh, it facilitates material compatibility outlines in that um, uh, in, in that white paper. Uh, and within Asperitas, we highly focus on the, on the material compatibility as well, as well as thermal optimization. Um, the uh, concept mechanical design uh, always includes um, uh, a study on existing assemblies versus optimized. Um, there, is, there are big advantages that can be achieved when optimizing for immersion cooling, which is something that we're outlining in that uh, IT gear white paper as well. Um, and this specific specification, as mentioned, can be made in 15 inch, 19 inch, 21 inch, uh, in one, two U's or OU uh, uh, compatible, uh, compatible formats. Uh, and it's completely flexible in component layout, but these need to be considered carefully uh, when it comes to thermal capabilities or material tolerance uh, or flow dynamics. Um, more on that on the next slide. Um, when us, what we also recommend is to do a full build test. Um, what Asperitas can do with developing a chassis based on these, uh, this open cassette design is uh, full spec testing uh, in our, uh, in our uh, immersion solution. Uh, Asperitas offers full thermal analysis uh, services and material compatibility studies for IT specifications. But when it comes to these guidelines of this specific chassis, um, there's a couple of things to take into account, and this image is also part of the white paper for IT gear optimization. Um, when, when you make a design for an IT assembly inside a chassis, um, one of the more important things to consider is the temperature tolerance or the temperature requirements for an end user or for a platform. Uh, so servers that are on the market are usually qualified for a certain temperature range of operation within a facility. Uh, and there, this is actually not different when you're looking at immersion. Uh, so also to utilize an open cassette like this, uh, one of the things that has to be considered is which uh, thermal uh, performance am I pursuing here? And roughly speaking, for any kind of open bath, Immersion technology. Uh, there is division in from cold to warmer area over the uh, uh, that, that relates to the height uh, to the position inside the liquid from bottom to top. Where with the coolest liquid usually being in the bottom, and I'm I'm referring to single phase liquid solutions by the way, and not dual phase. Now for single phase liquid solutions, the coolest area is always in the bottom. Uh, the middle area of a chassis is usually in some moderate or warmer environment compared to the bottom, whereas the top part of the chassis, especially in this case when it sticks out of the liquid, is usually non-immersed. So there shouldn't be any uh, active components above the liquid level simply because that is not effectively cooled. So passive components or components with a minimal uh, thermal properties can be placed there uh, as long as they have a very high temperature tolerance. So from a construction point of view, um, Asperitas is standardized on uh, stainless steel. Uh, that is because all the uh, products, all the systems that we develop are focused on a very long lifetime uh, and long-term operation in any kind of environment. Um, one of the things that needs to be added to this is, uh, so what we use is a plastic isolation film to protect uh, active components or uh, PCBs uh, and other electronics from the chassis itself, from the uh, open cassette. Yeah, so we don't want anything to touch uh, any metal to prevent short outs. Um, any other materials that are used uh, should comply with temperature operations between 10 and 100 degrees Celsius. 
uh, without excessive change in dimension. So you can imagine if you're running something very hot, that material might expand, uh, and you don't want to want to uh, have equipment that is stuck inside a tank. Uh, it also has to be tolerant to the dielectric liquid. Now we're using oil, which is uh, uh, which is a liquid that doesn't uh, have a lot of problems when it comes to metals, uh, but certain other materials like uh, rubbers might be affected by uh, hydrocarbon uh, liquids. Uh, so these are things to consider when determining which kind of materials to use to uh, inside the chassis. Uh, Another thing to consider is the protection of the dielectric liquid itself. Uh, so whatever you put, you insert inside the chassis should not uh, react with the dielectric liquid that is being used because you don't want to pollute that liquid either. It also should be rigid enough to support IT components. Uh, so uh, if a chassis is too flexible, uh, components might uh, might be causing short outs due to malformation of the chassis itself. Um, it also must be able to protect IT components physically and from electrical damage. Uh, so uh, we're working with vertical oriented systems. That means that anything that is accessed from the top um, shouldn't allow any uh, anything to drop down into the electronics. But also it should also protect against electrical damage. Um, then finally, there should, should take into account uh, any potential electrochemical potential difference, which should never exceed 0.15 volts. Uh, in this case, we're focused on guidance, reel, guidance reels. So if this system is to be immersed in a tank which includes an aluminium frame, for example, uh, then using stainless steel as the base material for this, for this uh, open cassette uh, would create a, a potential difference which is too high, which may actually incur corrosion, especially in the areas above the dielectric liquid. And so it's recommended to maintain material consistency between a tank or uh, just like you would with a rack and the materials that are used uh, inside a service chassis. The recommended manufacturing process here is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, standard laser cutting process with press break bending um, and brushed finish for aesthetics. Uh, one thing is for sure, everybody likes their products to look good and uh, the, brush, uh, the brushed finish will do that for you. Now there's a couple of recommended components that are part of the, um, uh, th 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 that we like to share with anyone who wants to use this kind of open cassettes or optimized immersion design. Uh, we've been working with Leone for some time, um, and there are uh, immersion-ready active optical cables. We're also working with some other companies, which will be part of the public publications uh, later on this year. Uh, we've been working very closely with one of the other OCP members, which is 10 Tech, uh, and we've been qualifying their uh, QSFP extenders. Um, with speeds up to 100 gigs uh, at 70 degrees Celsius cooling. Um, we're using that together with the Asperitas QSFP extender chassis mount. So we've developed our own chassis mounts for that, which can be uh, combined with this open chassis. Uh, and we are using indium foil as thermal interface material to replace the thermal paste between CPUs uh, or other chips uh, and their respective heat sinks. Uh, and more on those heat sinks will be covered in the IT gear optimization uh, presentation. Now, this is not, this open chassis is uh, something that we're already working closely together with other manufacturers and other partners in the field. So, um, a list of some collaborations which are currently ongoing. Uh, uh, first of all, with Supermicro, there is there are several Intel and AMD configurations that we've already built uh, and positioned and sold with, together with Supermicro uh, and some of their partners. Um, we have uh, in our booth uh, some images of the WeWin 
configuration, which, contain, which is a one-use system with three, tire, three boards with dual Intel scalable compute nodes. Um, there is a Penguin computing, uh, which is a combination with Gigabyte as well, which is focused on a one-use, three times dual Intel, Intel scalable compute node configuration. Uh, in the same consortium, there's also a one-use Intel scalable uh, motherboard with uh, uh, as a GPU node, um, together with Dell, we're developing a 2U uh, quad node uh, AMD solution, as well now as uh, Intel solutions, which are going to be closely followed on that. Uh, with ASC, where we have developed, we have created the first op immersion optimized storage system based on NVM uh, platforms. Uh, and we're currently uh, working on a One U AMD Olympus platform. Um, an example collaboration, which we were supposed to be uh, sharing on the uh, physical summit, uh, is one with Supermicro and AMD for a scalable climate independent edge computing solution for uh, telecom providers. Um, Considering the cancellation of the physical open summit, the announcement of that is still to be determined. Um, but this is a platform which has been, uh, which is quite unique in many ways as well. Um, so to finish up this presentation, I would like to uh, call upon everybody in the OCP community to also contribute to the ACS immersion group. Uh, immersion is uh, is a field which is uh, spreading and increasing uh, at a very fast pace, which is being adopted at a fast pace, um, and it's a platform that will benefit from your contributions, from your from your engagement. Um, please start using and co-developing optimized IT platforms for immersion because that's what the immersion requires and what the field requires, what the industry requires. Uh, and what is necessary to finally achieve incredibly high efficiency uh, for data centers around the world. Uh, more information on this particular development and on the open chassis, open cassette, uh, feel free to contact Asperitas uh, or join the immersion community and ask your questions there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attendance, and I'm ready for any questions if there are any left. Right, so if there are any questions, um, I'm, I'm here indeed. Um, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer anything that you might want to ask me. And if not, I'll be able to close the session uh, in a few minutes. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for your attendance. Um, appreciate your attention. Um, looking forward to seeing you all and uh, meeting you all in the upcoming session. It's uh, starting in half an hour from now uh, about optimizing IT equipment for immersion. Make sure to attend there. There's much more stuff uh, to be shared in there, and I'm, uh, I'm sure that there's plenty of opportunity there to ask more questions. Looking forward to seeing you all there. All right. Bye-bye.